Welcome to a lesson on solving a linear homogeneous constant coefficient system of ODEs in the form of x prime equals p times x using the eigenvalue method with distinct real eigenvalues. To begin, we find the eigenvalues, which are lambda sub one through lambda sub n of the matrix P and the corresponding eigenvectors, the vectors v sub one through v sub n. Now we notice that the functions, vector v sub one times e to the power of lambda sub one t all the way through vector v sub n, e to the power of lambda sub n t are solutions of the system of equations and hence x equals c sub one times vector v sub one e to the power of lambda sub one t plus all the way through plus c sub n times vector v sub n e to the power of lambda sub n t is a solution. Given x prime equals p times x, if p is an n by n constant matrix that has n distinct real eigenvalues, which are lambda sub one through lambda sub n, then there are n linearly independent corresponding eigenvectors, the vectors v sub one through v sub n, and the general solution to the system in the form of x prime equals p times x can be written as x equals c sub one times vector v sub one e to the power of lambda sub one t plus c sub two times vector v sub two e to the power of lambda sub two t plus all the way through plus c sub n times vector v sub n e to the power of lambda sub n t. And the corresponding fundamental matrix solution is given by x equals big X of t times vector c, where big X of t is a matrix whose jth column is vector v sub j times e to the power of lambda sub j t. Let's take a look at an example. Let's consider the system below where we have x prime equals the three by three matrix times x, and we're asked to find the general solution. Again, step one is to find the eigenvalues. We do this by solving the equation, the determinant of the difference of matrix P and lambda times I equals zero. In our case, matrix P is the given three by three matrix. To set this up, again, we have the determinant of the difference of matrix P and lambda times a three by three identity matrix. Simplifying, we have the determinant of this three by three matrix equals zero. To find the determinant, we will use the expansion by minors method and use row three because row three has two zero entries. Using the third row, notice the determinant is equal to the entry in row three, column three, which is two minus lambda, and then times the determinant of the matrix after we delete row three and column three, which gives us a determinant of this two by two matrix, which is equal to lambda minus two times lambda minus two, or lambda minus two squared, and then minus one times one, or just minus one. From here, we simplify and factor, set equal to zero and solve, which gives us lambda equals one, lambda equals two, and lambda equals three for the three eigenvalues. Now we move along to step two and determine corresponding eigenvectors for each eigenvalue. To do this, we set up the equation, the difference of P and lambda I times vector V equals zero, and then solve for vector V. And we do this for each eigenvalue. So beginning with lambda equals one, Again, we set up the equation, the difference of P and lambda I times vector V equals a zero vector. For lambda equals one, I have set this up. Notice how we substituted matrix P here, lambda here, and we have the three by three identity matrix. So we have this difference times vector V equals a zero vector. Simplifying inside the parentheses, we have the three by three matrix where the first row was one, 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 the second row was one, one, zero, and the third row was zero, zero, one. To solve the system, we can use an augmented matrix, which I've shown below, and then write it in reduced row echelon form, which is here on the right. Notice row three is a row of zeros, indicating we have an infinite number of solutions. Also notice V2 is a free variable. Row one indicates V1 plus V2 equals zero, or V1 equals negative V2. Row two indicates V3 equals zero. So if we let V1 equal one, V2 equals negative one, and of course V3 equals zero, giving us the eigenvector V sub one as one, negative one, zero. And now we do the same for lambda equals two and lambda equals three. The only difference in this setup is now lambda is equal to two. Simplifying inside the parentheses, we now have the three by three matrix with entries zero, one, 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 zero, zero, and zero, 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 times vector V equals a zero vector. Writing the augmented matrix and then writing it in reduced row echelon form, we have the matrix shown here on the right. Notice we have an infinite number of solutions. Row one indicates V1 equals zero. 
The second row indicates V2 plus V3 equals zero, or V2 equals negative V3. So if we let V2 equal one, V3 equals negative one, and of course V1 equals zero, giving us the corresponding eigenvector zero, one, negative one. And now we move along to lambda equals three. For lambda sub three, again, the only difference is now lambda is three. Simplifying inside the parentheses, we have the three by three matrix with entries negative one, 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 negative one, zero, and zero, zero, negative one, times vector V equals the zero vector. Again, we have the augmented matrix, and the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Row one indicates that V1 minus V2 equals zero, or V1 equals V2. Row two indicates V3 equals zero. Notice V2 is a free variable. If we let V1 equal V2 equal one, and again, V3 is equal to zero, we have the eigenvector V sub three equals one, one, zero. Now that we have the three eigenvalues and three corresponding eigenvectors, we can write the general solution. Again, we have the eigenvalues, the corresponding eigenvectors, and therefore the general solution is x equals c1 times the eigenvector v sub one, which is one at negative one zero, times e to the power of t, because lambda sub one is equal to one, plus c sub two times the eigenvector zero one negative one, times e to the power of two t, because lambda sub two is two, and then finally, plus c sub three times the eigenvector one, one, zero, times e to the power of three t, again, because lambda sub three is equal to three. We can also express this as a single matrix, or as the fundamental matrix solution, as shown here at the bottom, where x equals big X of t times vector c, where big X of t is a matrix function, where the columns are the eigenvector v sub one, e to the power of lambda sub one t through in our case, vector v sub three times e to the power of lambda sub three t times the constant vector c with entries c one, c two, and c three. I hope you found this helpful.